Hey there, Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today I'm going to show you how to put health bars into your game just floating over an enemy's head. It's a pretty simple process and I want to run you through it from start to finish. And then uh, if you come back tomorrow, I'll show you a system that works for setting up health bars for a bunch of enemies just kind of dynamically. But let's get started with the basic one here first. So you see I've got an orc just walking around in circles with the health bar floating over his head. And if I hit space, you see the health kind of slide down. It's dropping by 10% now every time I hit, just because that's the amount of damage and health that I've set this guy up with. So let's stop and take a look at the scene real quick and then we'll dive into the code. So here I've got this orc wolf rider, which actually came from a free orc asset pack. Just go search for orc, hit free, and you'll see it right there. And he is sitting on a wolf and he's got a walk in circles script on him. That's just making him walk around. That's it. It's just literally just walking and slowly turning. Um, here, let's pull up the script just to show it. Literally moving the position forward times move speed times time dot delta time. And then rotating a little bit on the Y axis. Just for demo purposes. But he also has a health script. And the health has a max health value set to 100. And I want to open up this script now. So let's take a look. We've got a serialized field for the max health. That's why it was showing up in the editor because it's private and serialized field makes it show up there. And then we have another private int for our current health. We don't make this public or serialized because there's no reason for it to be changed outside of our code. Then we have this event right here. And this is pretty important for how the whole system's hooked up. So we have an on health percent changed event that's gonna take a float. And then we assign an empty delegate here just so that if it's not registered, when we call it, it won't throw an exception. It's literally just a way to avoid doing a null check there. So on enable, we set our current health to the max health. It's basically just resetting the NPC. And then I have a modify health method and an update. Update, you see right here, just looks to see if I press space. And if so, it modifies health by negative 10. And then in modify health, we change the current health by the amount. Remember, we're passing in a negative here, so adding the negative is really just subtracting the health. And then we figure out the current health percent. And it's important that we cast these ints as floats or else it's gonna round down and give us zero or one only. So we wanna make sure that we cast these as floats and get the current health percent as a float because it's gonna be a zero to one value representing how much the progress or the health bar should go and then we call the on health percent changed event. So let's see where that's registered. To do that, I can simply hold shift and hit F12 in Visual Studio and find all the references. And here you see we have this reference. This is the one in health.cs. That's where we're calling it. But where is it registered for? And if we double click on the other one, you see it took me right to here, the healthbar.cs script. Now before I dive into how this thing works, let me just show where that is. So let's expand out our wolf and look right here, we have a health bar canvas. Now this is just a regular canvas, but it has this health bar script on it. So to create this, I mean, I literally just created a new canvas, went right click, UI, canvas, but we did need to change something. We need to change this from screen space overlay to world space, and then we set the scale down to 0 0.01. Pretty much always do that whenever I make a world space canvas, it's always set to 0 0.01 on the scale gets it down to about a right size. Now, let's take a look at our canvas real quick in scene view. Let's see, where do we have it? Right there, hit F, and you see it's way over here. It's nowhere near our guy. So we'd also wanna reset the position. There we go, hit F again. And now you'd see the canvas is just kinda bigger than him. So here I'd move it up, hit T to go to the size tool, and shrink it down. And this is literally what I did for the other one. And really, it should be bigger than the health bar, just a little bit, or the exact same size. Shouldn't be smaller like the previous one is. But there you go, you get the idea. This is how we created the canvas, and then just add a health bar script to it. Now again, we've got that right above, so I'm gonna delete this canvas. But just remember again, scale, world space, and get the position correct. Now let's look at this again. So if we go underneath here, you'll see that we have a background and a foreground image. I'm just gonna turn off the background image. You see it's just that black bar. This does nothing with code, it's just there for visuals. And then the foreground image is this progress or health bar that I've got here. And it has a fill amount because I've assigned a texture to it or a sprite and then set the image type to filled. Now if you create a new new image here, let's just do it. Let's, um, let's go through this process real quick. 
We'll delete that foreground. I'm going to duplicate the background, rename it foreground. And then shrink it down just a little bit so that it's not um, not the same size as the background. So that it fits kind of inside that little background. Now my art here isn't the best. You definitely could grab some better looking ones. In fact, I used the default button as the background here. And I think that's only in the newer versions of Unity. So if you're on something older than 2018.2, you may not have that. Okay, so we've got the foreground here. Oh, sorry, that was for the background was the button. For the foreground, we want to change it. Now you could just use a button image or something like that, and then it kind of looks okay. You got a red bar. And what I did though was grab one from Open Game Art. So if you just go to the Open Game Art page, search for health bar, you'll see this blood red bar. And I just grabbed that, dragged it in, and changed it to a sprite, and then assigned it. And now you see that we've got it right there, assigned. And again, remember, make sure that it's set to a sprite so that you can actually assign it. So let's go back to the foreground image one more time and finish up the setup here. The last thing, remember, was changing the image type from simple to filled. That gives us the fill amount option, which just allows us to slide it up and down. You may notice it's kind of doing a spinny radial one. It's because the default is radial 360, and we want horizontal. We want to just go right along the horizon. So we slide it to the left and slide it to the right, and you see that it's filling up and down. So I'll leave that there. And I need to go back to my health bar real quick and just reassign the image since I recreated it. And let's save. And then I want to go back into the code now. So let's see how that health bar is actually working. So if you remember when we left off, we register for this health percent changed. And this gets called whenever I hit space and the health goes down. So what does it do? Well, this right here just means it's registering for the event. And whenever this happens, call this method. And it's going to pass in the parameter. Remember it takes a float and we name it percent here. And let's go back to the definition of this event one more time. See again, that's because of this right here. So we we'll put the type of the parameter that we want to pass in this event inside the actions generic types and then that'll be there. We could also have multiple by the way. We don't necessarily have to have one. If we wanted to have two parameters we'd do a float comma float and then we'd have a second parameter. We'd have to pass it there. That's why it turned red. But we can do it that way too. Sometimes I see people pass like the uh, max health and current health and then do the calculation in the UI element. If you want to show the health amounts in there, totally makes sense. Like if you want to show you know, 50 out of slash 100 or whatever, you want to pass both of those there instead. So let's see, what does handle health change do? Well, here it could do something as simple as set the foreground images fill amount 2%. So we could do something like this and not kick off this coroutine. It would totally work. The only reason that we're doing a coroutine here is to add that little bit of smoothing. So let's watch it again real quick. When I hit space, watch the health bar can drop down and notice that we have this little field here, update speed seconds. So you see how it, it goes down kind of smooth? If I change this to zero, you see it goes instantly. It's just a pop. And if I change it up to like one, you see it goes really slow. It's almost so slow it's hard to notice. If we go to like a, maybe a 0.5, you can kind of notice it. There you go. But I, I liked 0.2. It seemed like a good speed right there. It's, you can see it's dropping. It's very obvious that it's dropping, but it's not too fast that it's instant. So how does that work? Well, let's look again. So we kick off this coroutine to change to a percent. And then um, we cache the percent that it was at when we first called this. And that's because we're going to use this lerp method in just a second. Let's remove that breakpoint. So we cache that percent, we create a float for elapsed, this is just the amount of time that's elapsed. And then we checked in a while loop to make sure that the elapsed time is less than the update speed. So remember I set this to 0 0.02, so as long as elapsed is less than 0 0.02, the while loop will run. Obviously on the first time through, elapsed is zero, that's less than 0 0.02, so it's gonna run. Remember when I set it to zero though, this just got skipped and it went straight into setting the amount, that's why it just kinda did that snap. So here we are in this while loop. We increment elapsed by the amount of time that's passed since the last frame. That's this time dot delta time. And then we update the fill amount and we give it a value equal to this. So what is this? This is mathf.lerp. It's going to interpolate between the first value and the second value. So this is our starting value. This could have been pr probably, well, let's say we start off at 1 and we take 10%. This will start off at 1.0 because our bar is all the way over, slid to 100% or 1. And then this would be 0.9 because we dropped down 10% to 0.9. So we want to go from 1 to 0.9 
And then this right here is the percent of the way to go there. So if you've never used mathf.lerp or just lerp in general, it's very, very helpful because it, it's going to give us, um, well, let's just, I guess I'll explain a little bit more. So if we're going from 1 to 0.9, if this is 1.0, if this value is 1, so we've reached the end, then it's going to be all the way at the second value. It's going to be 0.9. If the value here is 0, we'll be at whatever the pre-change percent is. In fact, let me just kind of write this out. I'm going to make sure that everybody understands this. So if we had a 0 here, we'll get that. We'll get the pre-amount. So if, if we call this with 0, Right there, that's what we'll get, the first amount. If we call it with a one, we'll get this amount. So we'll get the 0.9. And then if we called it with something like a 0.5, so we get 0.5, we would actually get halfway in between. So here, if we're saying that this is 1.0 and this is 0.9, we'd get 0.95. So it'd be like between, just like that. So that's what we would get. We'd get halfway between these values. So hopefully that makes sense. So that's how we're sliding the value down. And then we just wait in this coroutine until the next frame, allow a little bit more time to pass, and then slowly move that up. And I say slowly, it's relatively quick, but it's not instant anymore. And then this method just finishes off by setting the fill amount to the percent. That way if we went over or under by any tiny little amount doing our alert calculation, we go to the exact amount at the end. And the final thing in this class is just a late update call. And here we're looking at the camera. So we're turning the canvas to face the camera and then flipping it around. This makes it so that the UI elements are facing the correct direction. Now, again, there are some other ways to do this without using a world space canvas. And I'm going to show those in the next video. So make sure you keep an eye out for that if you're interested. But this system does work pretty well. And it's ideally a good thing to have a separate canvas for each UI element that's changing. So I really like this system and as long as you don't mind the health bars kind of moving along in the world and not being flat on the screen, this is generally one of the ways that I would recommend going. Anyway, I hope this is helpful and makes a little bit of sense and kind of shows how you would hook these systems up without having them be too tightly coupled or too linked to each other. Remember, our health is changing relatively independent of our health bar. So we could have other health bars in here. We could have our health system be completely different as long as it's you know, giving us an event that we can register for our, on our health bar. It's all that we really need. Anyway, again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, share with all your friends. Also, just want to say I really appreciate everybody who keeps leaving comments and sharing the stuff. It's awesome and makes it all even more fun and worthwhile. All right, thanks again. Have a great day.